Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. My name is Sergei, and I was born in the USSR. The topic of today's video is the life of gypsies or Roma people in the Soviet Union. I'm gonna share my personal experience as well as we're gonna take a look at some used to be top secret KGB documents. This document was discovered by Ukrainian historian Eduard Andryushenko. I'll post link to his Facebook page below this video. But before we start, it's time to learn some new Russian words. Sigan. Sigan. That's the Russian word for male gypsy person. Tsiganka. Tsiganka. This is the word for female gypsy person. Okay, so let's take a look at this KGB document. It's a report dated from November of 1953. And interesting detail, so this document is about criminal activity of gypsy uh, people in Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic, but it was titled Top Secret, Severshenna Sekretna. It's like totally secret if you translate exactly word for word. Совершенно секретно. Totally secret. So this is just a criminal activity, but it's totally secret. And if you remember in my video, Crime in the USSR, how safe was to live in the Soviet Union, I mentioned that it actually felt pretty safe to live in the USSR. And one of the reasons is a lot of criminal activity was top secret classified, so we never heard about it in uh, newspapers or on TV. And this document is addressed to uh, Comrade Kirichenko, uh, the secretary of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Ukraine. And we talked about that guy already in one of my previous videos when we covered another uh, different KGB document. And the title of this, the uh, is a piska, so it's like a report, об уголовных проявлениях, совершенных цыганами на территории Украинской СССР. So that's about criminal activities uh, that were done by uh, gypsies on the territory of Ukrainian uh, Republic. From get-go, this document gives us very important information. It states that on the territory of Ukraine, at the current time, leading nomads' life, or the Roman, so Kachuyut, 1,800 uh, gypsy families, with a total amount of around 9,000 people. So in the early 50s in Ukraine, there were around 9,000 gypsy people and they were leading nomadic lifestyles, so they didn't settle down. Another interesting detail that documents right away uh, states that despite uh, creating conditions for gypsies to get involved with society useful labor, most of them don't settle on the permanent places of li living in villages and such, and continue nomadic lifestyle. So there is another Russian word we need to learn. It's tabar, tabar, and that's the gypsy family that uh, travel together. They call them tabar, almost like a camp. So then the document states that these tabars, these camps of uh, nomadic gypsies that don't work, they travel around the Republic, and they do murders, they steal stuff, and also they do swindling, мошенничество. So there is a, what KGB claims that gypsies are up to. Then the document continues that gypsy women, цыганки, they wander around uh, villages and towns, and they uh, do begging, fortune-telling, гадания, Quackery, quackery, or sorcery. I'm not sure which is the correct word. Uh, so that's uh, znacharstvo. So they like telling you they know how to heal you from some weird disease. And then, of course, they swindling and small petty crimes, like stealing stuff. And another cute detail that uh, it says that uh, gypsy women also do reconnaissance uh, to find out like who has money or jewelry, stuff like that, expensive stuff, and also how to 
sneak in into apartment or the house later. So they also did reconnaissance work. Then the document provides some criminal uh, statistics stats for 1953 uh, that militia, that's how we used to call uh, Soviet cops, uh, arrested already in 1953 222 criminals, gypsies, um, and 17 of those were arrested for killing, 28 people for robberies and banditism, so being acting like bandits, 112 people uh, for stealing. So there's a difference between robbery and like a petty crime stealing. So if it's they rob the store, I guess, and then if you steal some stuff from the people, then it's a stealing. Then also 38 people for beating other uh, people, hooliganstva, swindling, 25 people get arrested, and two people were arrested for sexual crimes. So I'm not sure they're probably raping somebody or something like that. Then there is a list of most common and most dangerous kind of uh, criminal activities that gypsies did in Ukraine in 1953. This one is really weird because it says that two traveling gypsies uh, killed 11-year-old boy boy for no reason and cut uh, the boy's head off. And they got caught. And then uh, in February of 1953, uh, three gypsy guys were trying to uh, break into the store, but they got uh, caught by local cop, uh, Kibianka. They started wrestling. Um, a cop had a, a handgun. He shot one uh, a gypsy guy, but others uh, started hitting him with the shovels, killed him, and took his gun. On the way, trying to escape, uh, the one guy, one gypsy got who got shot, he died. And later, those guys got caught and arrested. And once again, I want to remind you, we never heard about any of these crimes. They never published in newspapers. It's so it only local people would know about it. There'll be some rumors going around, but in the newspapers, on the radio, they will never mention anything like that. In March of 1953, a group of uh, gypsies, total of four uh, males, were arrested. And apparently, in a period of from 1947 till 1953, so in, for six years, they were traveling around Ukraine and committed 73 crimes, including uh, seven robberies, two of which uh, had murders with it. 37 uh, small petty crimes, stealing stuff from personal uh, belongings of the citizens, and 34 cases of stealing animals. Probably, I would say, mostly horses. Uh, gypsies were famous for being a professional horse stealers. And this sad list of crimes uh, goes on and on. Uh, a gypsy couple, a guy and his wife, uh, killed and robbed a uh, Kolkhoz worker, lady, uh, a group of uh, criminals, they choked the Zadushili. So there was a guard that was uh, watching over the horse barn. So they choked him to death uh, and stole two horses. And then while they were escaping, they met another person riding a, a horse buggy, killed that guy, took his horse too. Then this document uh, kind of rolls into conclusion that because of uh, there is no rules that limit their uh, moving around, so there's uh, traveling gypsy uh, people, uh, they change their location often. They quite often don't have any documents or so use uh, uh, fake documents. They dodge this military service and Soviet army. They don't pay taxes and... Uh, they don't do any other duties uh, for the state. So that's kind of like blank statement, like what's going on with the gypsy population. The actual next statement uh, in this document blew my mind, found it quite uh, interesting. It says, recently they noticed this new trend that there's a new large groups of uh, traveling gypsy families that arrive from other republics. So Ukraine kind of becoming a hotbed for the gypsy families that arrive from other places and it said it's quite uh, interesting uh, detail that they being shipped by rail 
So they used the railroad um, transportation that was provided by the local governments. So they like trying to get rid of gypsies. So they like, okay, let's get you on a train, no charge. You don't have to buy tickets and just go. And it gives examples that on October uh, 20th, uh, in Zdanov, which is at that time it was called uh, Stalin region. It was renamed later. So train arrived from Leningrad and brought uh, 300 uh, gypsy people that were sent without tickets in uh, f- from Belarus, Belarusian Soviet Republic. On uh, same day in Nik- Nikopol- uh, Dnipropetrovsk region, 150 uh, gypsies arrived from Irkutsk, so that's uh, Siberia. And it says in October, again, once again, October of this year, around Kiev, which is capital uh, of Ukraine, my hometown, there are a concentration of large groups of gypsy families that arrived on the trains from Moscow and other regions of Russia. Uh, for example, on October 25th, uh, train number 43 brought in two uh, train cars uh, from uh, uh, Moscow, 180 uh, gypsies. So it sounds like like Ukraine was like a California here in America since it was warmer climate. Towards the fall and winter, a lot of gypsy families were moving down south uh, to spend the winter. Uh, so it's like, okay, so Ukraine was like California where a lot of homeless people move because it's warmer there in the winter. And the final kind of like chapter of this document, uh, it's kind of has suggestion that in order to uh, make uh, gypsy families uh, start working to be society useful uh, labor, to do society useful labor and uh, stop uh, criminal activities. Uh, So this is not, I apologize, it's not KGB, it's actually MVD, so that's the uh, militia of Ukraine, they ask in a central committee of the Communist Party of Ukraine uh, to start rolling on creating the law that forbids this nomadic style of lifestyle and also uh, find some solution about uh, settling down the gypsy population of Ukraine. So as a result of these troubles with gypsy population, on October 5th, 1956, uh, there was a law about it's hard to translate in English. So about making uh, these traveling uh, gypsies uh, make them work, pretty much. So they need to settle down and start working. So that's the law from October of 1956. So Soviet police, which were called militia, as I mentioned, uh, during 1957, they uh, located and... Uh, so they put them on the on the books. Uh, almost seventy-one thousand of gypsy people. Um, all the adults uh, received passports. So this whole population was like total on their own, uncontrolled, without documents and su- and such. And it says most of these uh, people were assigned for uh, places to live and work in different kolkhoz, collective farms, and factories, and so on. So I find it kind of interesting that officially there was a 0% unemployment in the Soviet Union. Everyone had a job. But at the same time, there's a number, 71,000 of uh, gypsy people. They never worked, but the Soviet government never counted them as unemployed. And as I mentioned earlier, and the documents mentioned earlier, uh, that uh, gypsy families were quite... uh, involved into robberies and also stealing personal belongings. So here there's a, a secret report uh, to the Central Committee of the Soviet Union now about uh, what militia, uh, our Soviet police, uh, confiscated from uh, some of the gypsy families in Russia at this time. And this list is actually quite amazing because it tells you what kind of uh, stuff uh, Soviet people kept at home. Uh, so they say... Uh, like they caught uh, this uh, gypsy family and they uh, found uh, government bonds, so uh, obligatsi gasudarsnik zaimov, 
for 416,000 rubles. Then they found uh, 263 meters of fabrics, uh, so silk and uh, other type of fabrics, two gold, gold coins and other like golden rings. They also found other family had also 754,000 worth of uh, government bonds. Uh, then they found uh, metals, some of them actually quite rare, so eight uh, Lenin, Orden of Lenin, one Orden of Bogdan Khmelnytsky. This is like really expensive, uh, expensive, I mean rare, and now it's expensive, a uh, military award. 90 uh, golden coins from the Tsar era, more medals, uh, watches. Uh, golden ring so you could tell that people were scooping up uh, you know gypsies were scooping up the stuff in apartments hardly any cash because most people kept their cash you know in the bank but they kept the government bonds at home and that's what the gypsy families were stealing so in total uh, police confiscated 7 million 725 rubles, 7 million worth of government bonds. Golden coins, expensive uh, fabrics, rings, and other golden items for half of the million rubles. Then 12 uh, Lenin, Orden Lenina, another Orden uh, of Trudavoy Krasne Znami, so awards metals, uh, gold coins, and stuff like that, and a lot of the uh, government bonds. Okay, so now we're done with the official part of my story about gypsy families in the Soviet Union. I was actually planning just to have one video, but it looks like there's uh, going to be way more to tell you yet, because I would like to share my personal experience and so on. Uh, so we're going to stop this video right now. I hope you guys enjoy it. And my next video will be about my personal experience with gypsies. And if you guys have any questions, please post under this video and I'll try to answer them. And I want to thank again all my Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your help. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at the teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet